Hello and welcome to the Mystic Cast, where you join Jack Stafford and Deborah Littleboy, members of the Aetherius Society, the cosmic religion for the Aquarian Age, as we break down the barriers between religion, science, metaphysics, philosophy, and mysticism, all of which are really only aspects of the self-same quest for truth. Please note, this is an independent program not produced or fact-checked by the Aetherius Society. Today, our guest is Karen Noir. Hello, Karen. Hi, how are you? Very good. Good. With our co-host, Deborah. Hi. And we're very excited to speak to you. And you're a medium. Could you give us a... So you've been channeling Dr. Wayne Dyer. Could, what was your relationship to Dr., Dr. Wayne? Now, I did not know him personally at the time. I was a huge fan of his. I went to his events. I read his books. And after he passed... I said the world wasn't going to be the same. I was grieving. And long, long story short, I um, was asked, I, my latest book before that was called Your Life After Their Death. And my publisher asked me, you know, a bunch of authors to speak about their books in uh, Florida. And they were going to be doing a tribute to Dr. Dyer. He had just passed uh, the day before I was ready to speak. Um, so I went to the event. And it happened, you know, synchronistic events. I was sitting on the bus going from the hotel to the conference center. And there was one seat available on the bus next to me. And Wayne Dyer is one of his daughters sat next to me, Serena Dyer. And the rest is history. I mean, everything just fell right into place. It's almost as if he arranged the whole thing. And ever since this happened, I, I wrote about it in my book, We Consciousness, um, for the first three years after he passed, I, he has eight children and a wife, and I have been on the phone with them the first three years, at least one or two of them every single week. It was, it was crazy. <laughs> and the, the personality of the person who, ret you retain the same personality as you had when you were here in the physical body. So if you were loud, you're still loud after you leave the physical body. If you're quiet, you're still quiet. And Wayne is loud. So he wouldn't leave me alone. He wouldn't leave me alone. So how do the mechanics of this work then? I'll give you an example. Um, what happens is most people expect to hear an audible voice or to see an apparition of their loved ones or Dr. Dyer and so forth. But for the most part, they come to us as thoughts that pop in your head for no reason, telepathically. They speak to us telepathically. And if you meditate, you can tell the subtle differences between your own thoughts and their thoughts. Your thoughts will have an originating thought that will trigger a thought and trigger another thought. When they come, they just give you information that you never even knew. Um, after this event in Florida, I'll give you a few examples of how he came to me. I was making dinner and he came through, as I'm making dinner, call Serena now. Call Serena now. And I'm like well, it's dinner time. I call her. Now, at this point, I knew all of their phone numbers and his wife because he's been doing this to me consistently. Call her now. Call her now. Um, so I called her. She wasn't answering her phone. And I called her, her sister, Sage, who's the youngest one. I said, Sage, what's going on? I'm trying to contact Serena and she's not answering the phone. Is something important happening that your dad wants to, me to contact her this moment, she said, ah, yeah, she's in the middle of giving birth. We're all here in the in the room with her and she's ready to give birth. I said, if you can, can you put the phone to her ear? Her da your dad wants to talk to her. And so she said, I'm ready to give birth. I mean, at that moment, she did not post anything on Facebook. I had no idea this type of thing. So all he wanted her to know was that he was there. He was aware. Don't worry, Serena, I'm not looking at you. I just am aware of the miracle of your baby being born. Um, I could share with you a couple of other things that even blew my mind. One day, 6 a.m., I just woke up and he said, "Text, uh, contact Tracy now. That's his oldest daughter. Call her now, call her now. I said, no, I'm not going to call her now. It's six o'clock in the morning. So I called, I, I kept it up, kept it up. And so I, what I did was I texted her and I said, Tracy, I'm so sorry. This is Karen. By this point, they know 
they know who I am. And I said, I'm really sorry, but your dad is telling me to, to contact you. Is it okay to contact you? She said, yes, exclamation, exclamation. So I called her and I said, what's happening at this moment? See, he, he got me at the right, exactly at the moments when something was happening with his family. I said, what's happening? And she's crying. She said, I just had a dream of my dad. And I said, wait, he's saying, yes, he could hear you, but you can't hear him. What does that mean? And then she started to cry. And she said, I just had a dream of my dad. And in the dream, I was yelling at him. And I asked him, can you hear me? Can you hear me? And his message was, I can hear you, but you can't hear me. So that happened over and over and over again. But he came through singularly to his family. And he came as a collective consciousness with a group, with group, you know, ascended masters, angels, and himself, St. Francis of Assisi, as a group consciousness to give to come through as the we guides. And they gave me a, a channel, the we consciousness uh, through them. I know it, that's a long... Yeah, that's, yeah. Hard, but... that's good, Jack. I mean, sorry, Jack, I'm jumping in, but that's that that's that's good. The, the thing that interests me is, has he ever told you, I can't believe how bossy he is, for one. Yes. And it's, you know, you can tell him that from me. <laughs> Maybe yes. never get a chance. I think he might be just a little bit boisterous, but... but did he ever say to you which level he he was on, which level he went to? Well, he he was very much, he didn't say what level he was on, but he was very, um, why he gave messages to his family first, and then I'll get to your answer in a minute, yeah. was to prove that it was really him. Okay. So that he said things to them that only they would know. Sure. So they would say, yes, this is really my dad coming through. So when he was giving messages about a very, on a higher level of consciousness, you know, the we consciousness, to give messages for the world about peace, which was very much needed at the time, it was 2015, um, that we would listen to what he was saying. So I know that's not answering the question, but it was a higher level of consciousness where he, it was weird when he was bossy and all of that, talking to his family, he was typical Wayne Dyer as he was in the physical body. When it came through as we consciousness, it was a higher loving um, level of consciousness, all about peace and love and the, you know, advancement of all of mankind. Okay. Yeah. And we're told, we're told, Karen, that, um, that the, that you can come down levels, but you can't, um, exactly. you can't move beyond your level of consciousness. Yeah. And so... Um, that makes perfect sense, of course, because if you'd have come in as a soft-spoken um, piece for all of us, you, there would have been, uh, are we sure? I mean, we know that he he was a, a very um, for everybody, and uh, uh, but 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 the personality would have would have been too big a shift, perhaps to to have swallowed. Well, you know, many people, wallet. yes, yes, many people wouldn't have listened to what he was saying about creating peace on earth. They could say, oh, yeah, Karen, no, he's just, he's just, you know, making this up. What I think he was doing, what I know he was doing is trying to prove, yes, that was him with his personality as he had in the physical plane, because they said, oh, my gosh, that's dad. That's the way he speaks. It was very forceful. You know, the first time they came to see me, they came to New Jersey and he was, you know, through me speaking yeah. to each of them differently. So they knew without a doubt it was his personality the way he was when he was here. If he didn't do that, nobody would listen to his messages. I don't know. Maybe they would have. They would have said, oh, how do we know it's really him? You know, but he did join a, a group consciousness where they were talking about the um, advancement of all of mankind creating peace on earth. So I hope that makes sense. No, no, it absolutely does. And, and, Again, we we are told through our teachers that that uh, the group sold that there is a collect that there's a, a collective um, groups that come through to certain certain people. Um, yes. that, that that the link is there. Obviously, you need the, you need to have the link to get the same message out. Yes. And so that that there is that that of course does make perfect sense. So does um, Doctor Wayne still come through to you, or has he gone a bit quiet? 
he has gone a bit quiet. Um, the first couple of years after he passed, I was on the phone with his children and his wife uh, many times each week and so forth. Um, and also collecting information for the we consciousness. And now it he's, I don't know, sometimes he shows up, sometimes he does not. Um, but he, if you understand what he was trying to explain is that Earth is not all there is. And to just keep coming back here, it's so much in the vast universe that he's traveling in and seeing and so forth. Okay, so so it's a message of hope, was it, people? Yes, it's a, a message about the afterlife, a message about peace on earth and how to attain peace on earth, how to um, create peace within. It begins with ourselves. We can't ex expect to have peace on earth. It, we're all connected. We are all one. And whatever we do to ourselves or another affects everybody. And he, he was explaining that. But he explained that as the group consciousness, the we guys, they call themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, when he joined that group consciousness, um, that we have to, in order to create peace on earth, we have to begin with ourselves. We have to create peace within ourselves, raise our vibration so it's more on par with the energy of who we really are, which is God within us. And when we resonate with that energy, if each one of us does that, we increase the vibration of the planet and peace becomes a reality if more and more of us do that. But yeah, and and again, we, we, we're told that the most significant event um, in our planet's life, so in, in Mother Earth's life, was the 8th of July, 1964 when she took a primary initiation of a, a stupendously massive amount of energy. Um, and so it was taken within her and she held on to it. The Lord of Karma said you, that she's got to, she can't hold back her evolution anymore. So she had to take this energy, this, this um, initiation, which um, she's holding on to and releasing gradually. So after the vibrations of the planet have been increasing gradually since the 8th of July, 1964. So if you look, and that makes sense because, of course, we have to, to live here. We've got to be able to live within the vibratory um, environment. And so yeah. now we see that like our life lessons are getting, I know for myself, that I can see, join the dots a lot easier because the same lessons are coming around a whole lot quicker for me. You know, so I am recognizing the, you know, what's going on. But some people who who, ha who haven't um, even embraced that there's life after this physical plane, yeah. um, I just like, you know, all of the, are, are, are freaking out. Um, and and yeah, so yeah. you can see that the that that whole turmoil will bring the the whole vibration down. So yeah. people like like ourselves, I've got even a a bigger job to do to raise the the whole vibration, to watch our thoughts, to um, help people out, to be a way shower of the way to bring in the the, the new world. Um, so I I can. I can totally understand why um, Dr. Wayne did as 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 he did. It makes perfect sense to me from from what's been what I've learned, if if you want. So, would you would you share with our audience a, a few of the messages from from your book? Do you mind? Sure. Oh, of course. I'll read it directly to you. So it's directly from Wayne Dyer. You know, there were some questions that I had asked him. Um, uh, we're talking about the energy of the earth raising vibration, but he said, this is what he said, at this time, a significant amount of negativity that has been stuffed down on earth over the last several decades is beginning to erupt from underneath the surface. Do not be fearful because this is necessary for the commencement of a thorough cleansing of the darkness with the light. Be thankful because the planet is now issuing to a new level uh, rising to a new level of awareness. While many will join forces with the darkness, an even larger number of others will become aligned with the energy of the weak consciousness to heal the planet. Each individual will make the choice as to which direction to take. Make sure to choose wisely and become a channel of peace 
allow the God force that is within you to shine through. So people are saying, oh, there's so much negativity. Yes, but it's rising out of the earth and it's creating, you know, allowing us to, to raise our vibration to become more on par with the energy of who we really are, which is God within us. We just have, as you said before, we have to focus on what we desire, which is peace, rather than what we don't want, which is war and violence and so forth, because our energy, the thoughts of who we are, we're vibrational beings, whatever we're focusing upon is growing. Yeah. So each one of us focuses on peace, peace will become a reality. We have that much power. Each one of us has that much power. Yes. And all, what, what we've also had given to us in the early 60s, I think it was 1962, we had some messages come through from um, uh, a communicator that's known as Mars Sector 6, or that that. that um, who who is who is now a Lord of Karma? But the message from Mars Sector Six through Dr. King at that stage is that the women have to take a stand mm -hmm. with this peace on Earth. You know, because we're all this. It doesn't matter what color our skin, race, creed, but but women have been um, our skills, our skill set of working as a community. So Dr. Dr. Wayne's in a in a community, if you want, there. So women are a whole lot better at um sharing and and helping each other out, uh, or historically a, a whole lot better at that than the men who are very much like pointed at me and and I'm gonna achieve and I'm gonna and I'm gonna get. And we've got this unbalance here. So so the message was the women will stop wars, stop all fighting. It is the women's responsibility to bring about that peaceful environment. So almost like work on the men. So don't you don't want your boys going to war. So speak to your husband. You know, don't don't want fighting at home. So create a um peaceful environment. So yeah. very much a, a big call to the, the women to step up to the plate and and show how to how to live together in harmony, as opposed to be like let the men go ahead and create their atom bombs and throw it at each other and you know all that um, nonsense. Absolutely, I'll give you a hug for that. But it's true. Uh, more women have to stand up and uh, speak up for peace yeah. and and what is. And right. the wonderful thing yeah. we have as well, Karen, now is that. Um, we can speak to each other with the with technology that's that's come on, you know. So we have you know, we've got used to Zoom because of COVID. We had to get you. We had to savvy up quite quickly, didn't we? To um, and that is that is all helping. I mean, I'm not saying that COVID is a great thing. No, please, so I'm not. I'm not saying that. But out of out of that adversity of um, we we found a way through. And that shows the human spirit. So we're here. I mean, we're talking to each other. I, I would never have had this opportunity, I believe, for many years if COVID had not hit. True. I know it's true. The, and, you know, the thing is, um, I'm not like Wayne Dyer. I'm not loud. I wish I was, but I'm who I am. And I can only, you know, what we're talking about peace and love. But when this started happening to me, I said, Wayne, why did you choose me? And he said, why did you choose me? I said, what? Because we were on the same frequency of love and peace and so forth. And one of the main things he said to me when he first started communicating with me, I, used, I said, I am so insignificant. I kept saying that. And he said, get out of your own way. Get out of your own way. And I've learned, I've, over the years, I've tried and, you know, I can only be who I am, but it's so important that we all get out of our own way and speak what's, you know, about truth and love and light, what we know. We all have God within us. It's just, and we all are miracle workers. We just have to know that we are. That's it. The mm -hmm. only difference is the miracle workers know who they are. So. Yeah. And we need to have this affirming these conversations that affirm that um that that 
the ethereal society isn't going to be for everybody. Um, but if as long as we're vibrating and, and raising the vibrations with a with the that intention and that single focused intention, then we're actually all on the same team. And therefore we 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 have to show that embracing of of the different way to achieve the same stuff. Um because we, as you've just said, we are all one. Yes. And that, that's hard to swallow when you're when when you're in a difficult a position. It's yes, yes. And 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 this is one of the main messages of Wayne and the the We Guides is it seems difficult to understand that we are all one when we're here in the physical body. But once you leave the physical body, you feel your oneness with everyone and everything because you don't have the physical body that separates you from others. So you know, there's so many things you go through a life review where you're able to see and feel how you've affected the other person, the living loved one, through their eyes. The reason is because you are one with them and you feel that oneness as if you you see through their eyes as if you are them and how you affected them, if that, if that makes sense. So um, when we say we're all one, the closest I could, you know, really feel that is when I'm meditating or just stay in that loving consciousness. I feel that oneness, you know, and we can all feel that oneness if we do these types of things, you know, quiet your thoughts, raise your vibration, become more compassionate, forgive, try to see through the other person's eyes and so forth. And when you do that, you raise your vibration and you can feel that oneness, which we are. And again, I'll say it again, whatever we do to ourselves or another affects everyone because we are all one. Yeah, absolutely. We we are told um, that we go to the level of consciousness which we deserve. If you want, like these these are these are Deborah's sort of words. But what, so so we where you go you go to a level of consciousness where basically everybody's vibrating pretty much within that same boundary, but you still. When you're at that vibration, you still feel physical. That's what we told Dr. King would go through the realms. And he'd say that when you're on the realm, there are trees and there are people, but they but they um aren't so limited in their in their um thinking. They they can see further, their clairvoyant skills are 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 more advanced. And interestingly, we told that. On, the, on this level, so this we call this our physical level, level one, we get everybody come here from all the realms. So mm-hmm. from the four, you know, from the four below to the to the six above, we all we all are here, which is why it's such a difficult place to keep balance. And um yeah, you know, so I find I found that quite interesting too, that uh, the levels of clear sight. The seeing what actually is happening is clearer as you go up the vibrations. But we're told as well that even the the, the dark forces, the lower you go, that they're very very clairvoyant, but their but their motives are are not right. are, are all for gathering power and and being Self. puppeteers, right? Puppeteers for, for people on weak souls on this level. Mm-hmm. Um, find it fascinating you know i uh, i in the book we consciousness i used the analogy of there was a gentleman named td jakes i don't know if you've heard of him no and i hope i do this justice he said this um it's a story it's just an analogy of a giraffe and a turtle so the giraffe only sees what's high in the trees up here and the turtle only sees what's down in the ground to judge the turtle what it sees it's foolish because that's all it sees. But if the giraffe lowers its neck to see, oh, what's going on down here? It could actually kill himself. It, the blood will rush to his head and so forth. So the the message here is to stay up here and the turtle gradually say, hey, what's going on up there? It, it looks pretty cool up there. And, you know, to raise their vibration. So, yeah, we're on different levels of consciousness. And we have to learn um, not to judge anybody else for where they are. But to see that through their eyes why they do what they do, as we do mm-hmm. after we leave the physical body, we do. We see why the person did what they did. We see how we affected the other people, you know, through the other person's eye, through our eyes. We can see through their eyes too. Um, yeah. So, yeah. 
Yeah, we, we, we're told that's the, after the initiation of death, you're taken to the hall of self-judgment. And it is exactly self-judgment. So you look and you see and you think, oh, and that on. Oh, how many times is I going to do, oh, and I did it again. I better get back in that in that spot. I need some more practice on that. And then yeah. we're told that we, we when it's our time, we know we'll come at the perfect time. We choose the time to come in. We choose the parents we come in. We choose the location to maximize our opportunities yes. to get the lessons that we need to evolve. Exactly. And then, and you can't blame anybody, can you? Because oh, you've done it all yourself. <laughs> exactly. We chose this life. And also... Mm -hmm. And I believe you will, you understand this as well, that we're not the only life in the universe. There are different awesome. levels of consciousness, different planets, and yeah. evolution. You know, some are more peaceful than others in different galaxies and so forth. And if there is reincarnation, which there is, and we choose to come back, why would we always come back to Earth? We don't. And why would only, you know, why would there only be people from Earth? There are other dimensions coming to planet earth as well and you see the difference in the people uh you could kind of tell who they are the yeah we, we are slightly different in our teachings but the same we, we're told that um once we've learned the lessons we need to learn here we we have the last initiation the initiation of ascension and then that that basically means we we've we've mastered all matter. We've taken Kundalini from the base of our spine up through the top of our head. We've been one with, and we can do that at will, not just a one off because it's a a good day and you you you're squared with Saturn. No, no, no. Any you can do it whenever whenever you want to. When you get to that stage, you you don't need to be here anymore. But you have a choice. Yeah. You either then go on to Mars or Venus or or you decide to come back into the pit again and help our other people. So then we've got the got the hierarchy of Earth, the Great White Brotherhood, that are full of ascended masters that have chosen, I think they um not to carry on their evolutionary journey to help the rest of us poor souls to to yeah. make it through. And we're also told that we have people walking from other planets here to help yeah. us with that same exactly. journey. That's exactly what I was saying. So, um, and, and sometimes those from other planets don't remember who they are or where they're from, yeah. but um, they are here. They yeah. are. Here. And, um, it, it, you know, just like on earth, there are, there are good and bad and different levels of consciousness. So it is with other planets as well. There's, loving energies and there's not so loving energies but you could tell the difference so but there are many here right now loving positive entities coming from a different planet here to save our planet so that we yeah. don't destroy it because we're all part of the same family apart of the solar family of the sun so to actually they're all up you know we've, we've all come from and through the sun so we have to go all back and through the sun and then we 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 carry on thereafter it's nice to be able to, to talk oh, to you. Oh, yeah, it's beautiful to talk to you. And even talking about life on other planets, you know, right. it's hard for people to understand that. They hear that, they they get scared, but they it, it's not what we're, we're shown on movies, you know, the, the aliens are, you know, trying to take over our planet. There are many very peaceful, as a matter of fact, I don't know. It's just something within me when I meditate. Some of the greatest masters, I believe, are not from planet Earth. That they well, that's what the our teachings say. Yes. Dr. King. Yes. Yes. Mars. Yes. Venus from Venus. Buddha from Venus. Sri Krishna from Saturn. A great Saturnian master come and, and was a cow herder to bring the to bring those those lovely teachings in yes we've got we, they, they come from all over they are teachers they're travelers and we're told by dr king that once we've raised our vibration we can again go visit we know that we won't be restricted to earth we 
we'll be able to go to other to planets and learn and bring back the information. But at the moment, we're not, we couldn't be trusted to do it because we're not at that, we're not at that level. We used to be. Right. I mean, Lemuria and Atlantis, we were, tra we were travelers, but um, we, we blotted our copybook by blowing up the place too many times. Or down our vibrations. Yeah. Look where we are now. Yeah, we're, we're on, the like on the threshold again. Yes. We need to. We really need to step up. Karen, we need to step up. We oh, need absolutely. To get I'm there with you. Around. Absolutely. Um, you know, I don't, you don't like to, I do things in, a, I don't do things in a forceful way. Some people do, you know, they, mm. they kind of yell and everything, but I like to do it in a, the way I do it. And, and maybe that's not the best way, but for me it is. And it's, you know, you create peace by being peaceful. So mm. if I go on Facebook or, you know, I'm talking about peace on earth, that's the way I do it. Yeah. Brilliant. Can you share maybe a, did you look Mark, something else you might want to share with us? Sure. Maybe whatever I turn to, let's see. Oh, I asked Dr. Wayne Dyer, what is it like in the afterlife? And this is what he said. Where I am now is not the afterlife, but the continuation of life without the restrictions of the physical body that bound me to the earth plane. One minute I was confined to the physical shell and the next I, I was free as, as, I, as I stepped into this pure state of infinite love. I'd yearned to reach this level of awareness for the last several years of my earthly existence. So I was surprised and delighted to achieve this goal in an instant. As I re-entered this familiar state of consciousness and arrived at my true place of origin, I was greeted by my loved ones, including my mother and yes, my father too, and glorious celestial beings eager to welcome me back home. I am elated that I can now be wherever I wish to be with a simple thought of a desired location anywhere in the universe. I am still aware and interested in what transpires on earth, but I now comprehend that it is just a tiny speck in the totality of all of creation. Make sure to tell everyone that the same loving consciousness that you have called God really does exist. It is present within everything and everyone in the entire universe. This spirit of God does not judge me or anyone else because it is all loving. On the other hand, I am now able to see how my actions, good and bad, have affected all those in my life, and I continue to grow and evolve. I am also able to see through my loved one's eyes to understand why they behaved in certain ways with no judgment. In this new place of reality, one always experiences pure joy and contentment. I, am, I continually bask in complete, unconditional love feeling my connection to the whole, while at the same time experiencing the freedom of doing whatever I wish to do and being wherever I desire to be. While on earth, I was able to connect to millions of like minds who were yearning for the truths of which I spoke. To them, I am pleased to say that the essence of the teachings I gave when I was in the physical body has now been confirmed to be true. Also, please spread this message to everyone who will listen. We are all one in love. Everything else is just an illusion. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. It's true. We are all one. And I can attest to the fact that um, after we leave the physical body, that's not it. I'm a, I'm a psychic medium. The messages I receive... There's no way I would know these things. They have to be coming from the other, those who have passed. Some of the things, finding missing articles or, you know, the things that I have experienced, this Wayne Dyer connection and so forth. And you know what's the best part? We all can do this. It's not just, oh, Karen Noe is a psychic medium. She could do this. We all can do this. We all are able to connect with those who've passed. We just have to learn how to do it, how to be more on the same level as who they are, you know raise our vibration to the level of who they are, which is more, you know, love and peace, quiet our thoughts so that they could come to us and so forth. When, when you're in a, when you go into your meditative state, do you know 
which which chakra you're 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 working with? Do you have you, do you get any indication on on which if you like which level? We're told that each of the each of the chakras have a for a different level of consciousness. Yeah. Um, I go right to the crown chakra. Right. Okay. The Always. The heart chakra. No. Sometimes oh. the heart chakra, if it's meditating about love and peace and so forth, um, it depends. Sometimes I'm like, okay, today I don't feel any angels. What's going on? I go to the third eye <laughs> and so forth. So you could actually go to that that chakra as you're meditating. And we can clear our chakras. Um if you feel they're blocked, because we have to keep our vibration, our chakras open in order to connect with them. Our chakras normally spin clockwise. Mm -hmm. If we're the clock, so our left hand, it'd be one o'clock, two o'clock, like that, round. You take your hand and you, you go over the chakra and you spin it in the opposite direction. Have you ever heard of this? Adana Eden, she's a wonderful author. She, she's the one who discovered this. You go in the opposite direction, two minutes, three minutes, and then shake your hand off and then go in the correct position. This will clear your chakra. Now, the only difference, and you were saying about females and men before, mm -hmm. this is interesting, that men's crown chakras spin normally in a counterclockwise position, whereas women, is they're all clockwise. And that shows you that the difference yeah. That's interesting too, because before I was with the Ethereum Society, I um, I served at a spiritualist church, a Christian spiritualist church, and in the he and I was one of the healers, and we would quite often check with a pendulum. Yes, yeah. but, yes. But the interesting thing is that on when I ever checked, it would go clockwise. Anti-clockwise, clockwise, anti-clockwise, like so, like a snake. Oh! And so when I got one that was going like two clockwise ones, I did my utmost to get them so that they <laughs> so that they were lining through. So the the fact you've come with and said that 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 um, the teaching said that they they were all running clockwise Except makes me man. makes me wonder what I was up to really. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, oh, no. yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Isn't that funny? But I, this is something I have. I also do with the pendulums as well, and it's very interesting when somebody's going through something in their life. Um, say they lost a loved one, and you put the sh the pendulum over the heart chakra, it goes counterclockwise, so it's not spinning correctly, right? So we clear that energy because they have a broken heart. So we clear that energy, put it back in the correct position. You put the pendulum back there, and it spins in the correct position. I could do some more work on that. Yeah, if they can't speak their piece, if they're keeping their, you know, they're not saying what they need to say, that would be clogged, you know, going in the wrong direction and so forth. Yeah. I wonder, because I did quite a lot of pendulum work um, with charts. Uh, at one stage, that's what I thought that I... that. I thought that was my calling, but um, and then uh, it wasn't anymore. You, you know, like you, you find a you, you find different routes. But the 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 fact is that whenever when I, my, my pendulum used, used to speak to me, never did clockwise and anticlockwise. I sort of taught it to do a nod and a shake of a head because that was quicker. Yeah. Um, and then and then it was if it was did a. If it did decide to do a clockwise, it was like you're nearly there. Keep going, keep going, and then, and then, and then, or or back up if it was a if it was a counter. So I wonder whether I had, a, if you like, um, programmed my pendulum to do what I thought was right. You see, you see where I'm, I don't oh, know. Oh, it's possible, absolutely. But you went with the guidance. Tool, right? So you so went with was guidance. Right. Yes. Hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, don't know, but it, but you, yeah, it's got my got me thinking because Doctor King actually made um, pendulums. He made radionic pendulums, which were from beech wood with a um, silk with a silk cord um, oh. because they they're, they're really highly balanced and sensitive, and they almost like a little mouse when it used to get like excited. It was it used to, his little nose, you know the. 
the, the, the b- bottom of it would, would, would shake. So very, yeah. very um, sensitive to, um, to, the, to the energy fields. But yeah, you've got me, got me thinking now. I'm going to do know, some... There's, ex- there's a wonderful book by Donna Eden. It's called Energy Medicine. And she talks about how to clear the chakras. And that's what, you know, I have noticed too, when uh, I do the healing in my office and I teach classes at my center in New Jersey, um, as I put the, you know, the pendulum above the chakras, it's always associated with whatever's going on in their life. Um, whatever it is that they feel like they're not in control, their, you know, solar plexus would be blocked and so forth. So I clear it. I do it counterclockwise to clear, shake it off, and then put it back in the correct position. But maybe I programmed it that way too. Who knows? <laughs> you know, the fact, the fact is that. We we both of us were doing for the highest good for the person we're working with. We're exactly. working with the love energies, and so it, uh, actually the mechanics of it perhaps is overridden by the um, intent, because the the, the intent is what was to heal the person. Absolutely, you found something that needed clearing, and you clear it, and maybe you know they then they were more in balance, and they. It sorts itself out because you've you've cleared the blockage. Well, that's Maybe true. Huh. Um, yeah, I don't know, but it's very, yeah, interesting. very interesting. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I know Jack left me a little message to say he had to um, had to leave because he's got a baby and baby was crying. So that that okay. was why that that's why he's he's left us. Um, but this has been fascinating for me. Yes, yeah, same um, here. I'm so I'm so pleased that that you've come and you've spoken to us. Oh, here he comes, He's coming back to us now. Probably heard me. Um, yeah, that you, you've come and, and you've spoken and given people yeah. food for thought. You, did you hear me, Jack? I hear you. Yes, I use my powers, my <laughs> hearing. <laughs> As the baby, good. Good, yeah. Sorry, I had to jump out to the babysit. This, actually, I've been told that it's not babysitting when it's your child. Well, I that's true. Well. How old is the baby? A year and a half. Yeah. Aww. It's a beautiful, but he's, uh, he's teething and his teeth oh, are uh, causing us all pain. But, he's a sweetheart. But, uh, but we were listening in the background while I was playing with him on the floor there, and it was a wonderful conversation. It was very interesting about the pendulums and, uh, yes, you know, yes. and the energy flows and, um, yeah, I was just wondering if uh, have you asked Doctor? Could you ask Doctor Dyer in your next meditation about the Ethereum Society? Is he absolutely? Yeah, it'd be nice to be nice to know what he. Yeah, it's usually when I'm meditating, and and you know what? In the past, he would just come to me. I didn't call upon him. He just shows up, but I will call upon him. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, thanks very much. See, yeah. And so how can people read more, read your books and keep in touch with you? Do you have a mailing list or Yes, I do. Or... They go to my website at karennoe.com. That's K-A-R-E-N-N-O-E.com. You can find out more about me and my books. Um, I do teach classes, but I'm in the United States. You know, I travel in, in the United States, but there are online classes as well. And you have all my books and videos and so forth. Wonderful. So- well, people should check it out. And if they want to learn more about the Ethereum Society, they can go to ethereus.org. Thanks, and how everyone. do you spell that? Spell it for people. They don't know. That's good idea, yes. A-E-T-H-R-I-U-S dot org. Perfect. Was that right, Deborah? No, but never mind. Oh, <laughs> it wasn't right. I'll put it in the show notes, Jack. Oh, thank you. Sorry. I do my best. but uh... Yeah, it's, it's, it's difficult, isn't it? <laughs> And in, anyhow, it, it'd be in the show notes, and, and it would be that would be good. Yeah, when we get your name spelt properly and everything. Yeah, so, we'll get the perfect. names right for everyone. Today's not been the day. <laughs> Give the baby a hug from me. Thank you very much. All right, bye bye everyone. Let me soak that up. <laughs> bye bye. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye. Have a beautiful. Bye.